Hello and welcome to this series of technical tutorials on doing foundational things with Vizier. In this session, we're going to cover the topic of Direct Data Intake API. My name is Fatima, I'm a product manager, and today I will walk you through one of the key features we have developed for importing and mapping your data into your Vizier application using this API. The objective of this session is to help you understand the value of Direct Data Intake API and how to use it. At the end of this tutorial, you will know what the Direct Data Intake API is, why and when it is recommended to use it, what are the preparatory steps to working with this API, how to get started, and I will be showing all of this to you using Postman as my API platform. So this is an API that loads data directly into your Vizier application and automatically maps it to the data model. So if you have an existing ETL ecosystem that you want full control over the data transform activity in your own ecosystem, and then you want to send the already transformed data to your Vizier application, this API will be a perfect fit for you. To use this API, you would need data write access and model read access to an instance of a Vizier application. I will explain why in a second. To be able to generate your data files in a format acceptable by the data model, you need to first understand the data model itself. To do that, you need to make an API call to read the data model, and that is why you need that level of access. Then you need to run your ETL code to generate the files in an acceptable format, and then you want to load them into your Vizier application using the Direct Data Intake API. And that's why you need the data write access. Now let me show you how to successfully go through this workflow using Postman. As you can see on my screen, Vizier has a public Postman workspace and there are a set of collections in there that you can fork into your personal or organizational work workspaces. So there are a few collections available here, but today we're going to focus on Direct Data Intake API. As you can see, we have the option of forking it into our own personal workspace. A good thing about this is on top of having access to the a set of pre-packaged and pre-built scripts to go through this process from end to end successfully, you also have the option of having the notifications on, which means you can watch for uh, watch this collection for any potential updates that are happening to it. So I have already done this. I have already forced this into my personal workspace. So I'm going to take you through that. So this is my personal uh, workspace and I have two collections in here, as you can see. I have data model API and I have direct data intake API. Again, if you remember, I just explained that you do need the data model one to fetch the catalog of all the objects that you have in your instance of your Vizier application to be able to then decide which subjects, which entities you want to load data into. Prior to that though, you see that there is this authentication step. So in order to establish a secure connection between Postman and your Vizier application, you need to specify that this is the person who is logging in with this um, login information, uh, which application you're trying to log into, and you also need a security token that needs to be updated um, and is not just a one-time created token. So as you can see here, I have forked the collection, but I have defined my environment using my own username, password, and the URL to the tenant that I have created for myself. But on top of this, I need to get a security token. So in order to do that, this is the first step I will do. By sending this request, I am establishing a secure connection uh, by, and letting the application authenticate that this is actually me, my user with the right level of permissions and access who wants to load data into the Vizier application. You can see that the status is 200 OK, which means that it was established successfully. Now I can move on into reading the data model. So there are multiple options here. I'm going to run this one. What this one does is that it gives me the list of all analytic objects, 
all entities that exist in Vizier's data model with the list of all the properties that I need to have for each of those analytic objects. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and I can do that, but also I can do a uh, fetch this uh, data model in a different way. If I know the name or the ID of the specific object that I want to fetch, I can just run the script that will only ask for the data model for the metadata for that specific object. So in this example, if I want to, let's say, um, load data or know the data model, the specifics of data model for my employee subject, I can just say, bring me the data for employee. So what happens here is that in this query that I'm sending, instead of ID, I will put the word employee. Same thing applies if I want to fetch any other uh, entity from my data model. Same thing applies for metrics. I can get the list of all metrics or I can ask for a specific metric, dimensions, concepts, plan models, and so on. So going back here, what I did here is I ran the query to ask for a list of all the objects that I have, and this is the result. It's giving me the, the names and the properties uh, for each of the analytic objects that I have available in my tenant. Now for my use case, I don't want to load the data to all of these things that are available for me. I want to load the specifics of my, uh, just the employees that I have in my company, um, the information about the starts, the information about the exits, and that is it. What I'm trying to go for here is I want to know how many people I have in my company. I want to know where they're working from. I want to know who they're reporting to. I want to know if the span of control is um, properly set. I want to know information about diversity. Do I have enough, uh, a diverse enough organization? So to answer those questions, I don't need to populate data for all of the objects. I only need employee. And when I'm looking at employee, I don't need the list of all the properties that I have captured ever for my employees. I only need the properties, the attributes that are relevant for the use case that I'm solving for. So instead of providing a hundred different properties, I can only provide a handful. For example, I can only provide first name, last name, birthday, gender, uh, minority information, anything that is relevant to answer the specific questions that I want to um, using Vizier Analytics. So in this example, I have decided that I only want to load data into employee, employee start, employee exit, and organization. So in order to do that, I will go away and I will generate the files in the format, basically meaning having these columns that is required by Vizier data model. Once I have created my files, I will need to put them in the right folder for the postman to pick them up and load them using this API into my application. So you can see here that I'm showing you would have to go to your postman folder, files, and then you put all the files that you need inside this folder, which will then be picked up by this process. Let's just take a look at one example. Let's take a look at my employee file. As you can see, it's a CSV file, and I have included all the information that I needed for my use case to work. The data that I need to feed into Vizier's data model so that Vizier can provide me with the analytics that I am looking for. So as you can see that I have employee IDs here. I, can, uh, I have the dates of the changes in anything in the profile. I have um, if the employee is active or if the, this profile is no longer active. I have people's titles, email addresses, and so on. So now that I have my file ready and I'll put in this folder, I can go back to Postman. I no longer need to access the data model API, but now I want to focus on direct data intake API. So again, you can see that this is the list of script that I will want to run one after another. And I've already copied the template, the structure from Vizier. One thing that I needed to change though, was defining the files that I want to upload because from one use case to another, the set of files that you would want to load is different. So you will have to manage this part uh, based on that requirement. You can see here that I have the transaction set for the, for the set of files that I want to load. So after begin transaction, this is where I define which files I want to upload 
and I have to also specify the path. So let's just look at one for example. Again, this is something that is already built and put together in the um, Vizier workspace. You can just copy it over. All you need to do is you need to make sure that the name or the ID of the object that you want to load data of is properly specified here. And also you need to pick the path. You need to pick the file that you want to upload to that object, to that entity in the data model. So here I'm saying that I want to load data into employee and I have selected employee.csv. The files that will show up in this list for you are the files that you have uploaded in the folder that I just pointed you to. So I will basically duplicate this. All I need to do is I need to update, make sure that the name is updated to the subject that I want to load for or the analytic object that I want to load data for and the file is properly selected. Once you have all the files that you want to upload set to which part of the data model you want to load for, you are done. We then have the commit transaction part, which basically just decides that, okay, now I have all the files I want to upload. I'm going to commit all of this as one transaction, which basically triggers that whole data loading process into your application and generating the the disk cache required for your application to be up and running. Once you run all of this, um, you can keep track of the status of this transaction that you just committed, which would be applicable using this script. You can run this as much and as often as you want until you are guaranteed that the whole process, the whole workflow is successfully completed and now you can go into your application and see the results. So I'm going to run this uh, collection to show you how it works. But before that, just want you to pay attention to this part. So I said we have the security token included in this collection as well, because chances are while I was generating my files, long enough time has passed that my token is no longer valid. So I have to ask for a new token. Just to make sure that you have peace of mind and you don't have to worry about the token being valid or not valid anymore, what we did was we added this as a pre step to each collection. So regardless of if it's valid or no, no longer valid, you will get a new token and you won't have to worry about this whole process to fail just because of that. So I'm going here, I'm going to click on run so that I run the whole collection. You are proposed with, you are proposed with the option of selecting which of these you want to run or not. Right now I'm gonna deselect these two just so that the load happens faster for the sake of this uh, demo. You have a bunch of other settings that you have uh, here that you can specify if you want to run manually, if you want to schedule and whatnot. What I want you to pay attention to is to click on this so that the responses would be persistent so that you can keep track and see um, if it fails at any point or if it successfully completes. So I'm going to click run. So what is happening here on my screen is that now you can see that the collection is being run. Um, it started from that getting a new security token step that I just specified. It goes through the same steps that I copied from Visitor's workflow. Um, transaction has begun and now it's trying to upload the files that I have provided one by one. You can see that the order that is, uh, the steps are happening here are the same order that I have defined here in my collection. So be careful of that. If there is any uh, mandatory step that needs to happen before another, make sure that you have the steps properly defined here. Another thing you can track is um, for these steps, you actually get the message that it says this is, it has worked successfully. Another way to know that these steps are successfully completed is to look at this part. Anytime you get a 200 OK, it means that that step was completed and it was successful. So now you can see that my transaction began successfully. Each of the files that I specified are uploaded again successfully. And my transaction was committed again successfully. This means that exactly at this moment, that process of loading the file into Vizier and having them map into the data model is triggered. Now what happened here is because I ran the collection all together as one package, I also ran this part 
the check for the committed transaction status. Now, if I click on that, you will see the status here says provisioning. Reason for that is we asked to check the status immediately after I had just committed the transaction. So obviously it's not complete yet. You won't see that's complete. You see that the um, application is trying to provision for this uh, data load for these files and prepare them to be loaded into my application. Now, obviously this is not enough. I want to keep track. I want to know when this step is actually done and the whole process is completed. So I want to check that status frequently. What I can do for that is I can just go to commit transaction. I can go to check committed transaction and I can just run this one script. Now you can see that the status changed from provisioning to running, which means that now that process of data loading is in progress. I can click on this. I can refresh this as many times until I get the message that tells me that the work is successfully completed. Okay, you see that now in less than a minute, the whole process is completed. The status is now changed to succeeded, which means that I can go into my application and check for the data and see if everything is to my liking. And if so, I can publish that change, push that change to my production environment. So I'm gonna do that now. This is my application that I just logged into after I have the data loaded into my Vizier People application. So you can see that the landing page is the guidebook, which is populated with pre-packaged, predefined stories of the analyses that you can uh, use to help with your help your organization with your with their people questions. So you can just click on any of these. Let's say I'm going to essentials. I care about diversity. I want to look at my diversity metrics. So I will go here, look at the charts, look at the data, share this with relevant people in the company and decide what we want to do if there's anything to do at the, as the next steps. Another option is you have a specific question in mind that you, is not necessarily in the prepackaged solutions. You can go to explore and you will be landed in an experience that you can build your own charts, picking the metrics, the group by, slicing and dicing in the way you want, look at any point in time in the history and decide what kind of chart you want to make to share with others. To get a more detailed version of this tutorial, having written down examples, tutorials, documentations, code samples, you can go to developer.vizier.com and have access to all of the material that are publicly available. Um, for this example, you can go to tutorials, you can go to direct data intake API, and you will see a documented version of the tutorial that you can follow step by step to get to the same outcome that I just got. Thank you for watching. To see more technical videos, please check out the description in this video or visit vizier.com to learn more.